Welcome to the Wargrove of Woe, and today we're going to be talking about the Fire Slayer's battle line options. First up are the Volkite Berserkers. They have a basic stat line of 4 inch move, 7 bravery, 2 wounds apiece, and a 5 up save. They have some options for what melee weapons they can have. They can either have hand axes or war picks. The hand axes are 1 inch reach, 2 attacks, 3 for the leader, 3s to hit, 3s to wound. No rend, one damage. The war picks are slightly different at one inch reach, two attacks, threes for the leader, threes to hit, fours to wound, one rend and one damage. Additionally, they have a simple missile profile of the fire steel throwing axes. They have eight inch reach, one attack, hitting on fives, wounding on fives. No rend, one damage. Now, their unique abilities is a little extensive. Uh, for their equipment, they can either have twin hand axes, or hand axes and shield, or war pick and shield. Um, and I'll explain what the shield gives them in a second. One in five can have a horn, which gives them a plus one to charge. Um, and once per game, you can unleash the fury of the unit, which allows the model the models in the unit to fight with their melee weapons before they are slain. So you would unleash their fury, and then if your opponent kills any of your Volkite Berserkers before you remove them from battle, you can have them swing with all their weapons, like they're going down with a blaze of glory. Um, if you equip the unit with twin hand axes, you can reroll all failed hit rolls. Um, if you equip it with the shield, after you make a charge roll, for each Volkite model within eight inches of the charged model or in the charged unit, um, you roll a dice, and for each six, you deal a mortal wound. Also, if you're equipped with shield, you give them a plus one save if they didn't move that turn. Um, their battlefield rolls is they're an offensive tar pit. They are your cheapest options in terms of point cost per model for your battle line. And with their Unleash Their Rage ability, it can make getting rid of them costly for your opponent. Because for each of those models that your opponent kills, you get to swing back with. Um, to maximize the efficiency of Volkite Berserkers, I take them in squads of 10. Since they have a fairly large base for infantry units and only a one inch reach for their mis uh, melee weapons, so if you go any larger than the minimum squad size of 10, you're going to kind of get diminishing returns of value. Um, and then in terms of the equipment options, there's two thought processes. Uh, twin hand axes are really good at dealing with uh, lightly armored infantry um, because they are going to hit more often, but they're not going to have rend to get through armor. The war picks with shields are great for slight, uh, medium to heavy armored infantry um, because you get that mortal wound damage on the charge as well as the rend. Um, so I think that is a personal preference choice. But the I, I would never take the twin hand axes with a shield. It's kind of like you're not getting much out of it. There's better options. Onto the conditional battle line options. First up, you have the uh, Arik Hearthguard units. In order to run them as battle line, you must have Rune Master, uh, 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 Rune Master for your general. They have a similar stat line to the Volkite Berserkers with four inch move, seven bravery, two wounds, and a five up save. They have a simple melee profile with their Magma Pike, which gives one inch reach, one attack, threes and threes to hit and wound, no rend and one damage. And their missile profiles is really what you're here for. They have the basic throwing axes that the Volkite Berserkers had, and they also have the Magma Pike. Uh, with an 18 inch reach, two attacks, three for the leader, fours to hit, threes to wound, one rend and one damage. But here's, here's the real teeth for these weapons, is that if you attack a monster with uh, these Magma Pikes, you add one to the damage characteristic, as well as having the monster's movement and giving them a minus one hit roll if your magma pikes deal any damage 
This is really, really powerful, especially in third edition Age of Sigmar, where monsters are everywhere and they're incredibly valuable. So if you have any anti-monster abilities, that's an instant boost in their value. Um, and if that wasn't enough, they have a 4 plus bodyguard ability to heroes on foot, so any hero that's not on a magma droth. Um, basically, whenever a hero is attacked with a, 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 a weapon or an ability that allots wounds, on a 4 up you have to allot it to this hearth guard. Um, and something interesting to note about this is it reduces all multi-damage abilities and attacks to only one mortal wound. So say you have a um, two damage attack coming through and it's supposed to deal two damage to the general. If you get that four up bodyguard, it only deals one damage to the hearth guard. So it makes them a little bit more tanky and kind of reduces the efficientness of enemy um, damage abilities. Um, like I said earlier, these guys are monster killers. You, These are incredibly valuable in third edition, and I would pretty much always include them um, exclusively for this monster killing role, because monsters are really scary, and if you're coming up against anything with a lot of monsters, you're going to get a lot of value out of them. Um, the bodyguard ability is also great, because similar to most factions, uh, Fire Slayer heroes are force multiplier units, so the longer you can keep them alive, the better. Um, Hearthguard are pretty unique in that you can take them any, any size of squad and pretty much do fine. Um, I recommend taking them in squad sizes of 10 to 15, um, just so you can stack buffs on larger units if that's your, your, uh, your stick. And I would always try and target them with monsters and keep them near heroes to make use of their abilities. Next we have Hearthguard Berserkers. These guys are incredibly scary. Um, and similar to the um, Auric Hearthguard, you must have a Rune Master General. They have a stat line of 4 inch move, 8 bravery, 2 wounds, and a 5 up save. They have two options for their melee profile, either the Berserker Broad Axe, which is two inch reach, two attacks, three for the leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, one rend and two damage, or the Flame Strike Polearm. Two attacks, two inch reach, three attacks for leader, threes to hit, threes to wound, no rend and one damage, as well as the basic Throwing Axe Missile Profile that all the other units have access to. Um, they have a 6-up ward natively, and if they're within 10 inches of a hero, they have a 4-up ward, which is really powerful. Um, and additionally, if you equip them with the Flame Strike pull arms, 6 to hit, deal 2 mortal wounds in addition to everything else, ev ev all other damage they deal. These guys are scary. They do a whole lot of damage, especially if you equip them with the Flame Strike pull arms. Um, and with a 4-up ward, 2 wounds, and all the other defensive abilities you can stick on them, they're going to be really hard to chew through. Um, I would take them in squad sizes of 15. Because you have that 2-inch reach, um, you can take the max squad size and not lose any value. Um, and for maximum damage output, I would also equip them with the Flame Strike Polearm. It's just better in every way to the uh, Broad Axe, in my opinion. So that was the Fire Slayer's Battle Line option. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like or a comment. And if you have any uh, factions, concepts, or ideas for future videos, please leave that in the comments as well. Thank you for watching, and this has been the Wargrove of Woe.